Hi, welcome back. In this video, I am going over the full trauma assessment without explaining anything. I am going to talk both as the EMT being evaluated and as a proctor doing the evaluation. I will try to make it as clear as possible as to when I am talking as an EMT and when I am talking as a proctor. I will indicate proctor before I talk as a proctor. So first thing is first, BSI is my scene safe. Proctor would say, your scene is safe. I would then ask as an EMT, what is my nature of illness or my mechanism of injury? For this scenario, Proctor is going to say, your MOI is a patient that fell two stories from a construction site. I would then ask as the EMT, is this my only patient? Proctor is going to say for this scenario, this is your only patient. At this time, as the EMT, I am going to call for additional resources and I can always cancel if I don't need them. I am also going to consider C-spine. Since I have two imaginary partners for my inner EMT skill, I am going to have one of my partners stabilize the spine like so. Now, my general impression for this scenario, I am seeing a male patient that is supine and I am going to say that they are between 20 and 30. The proctor is now saying, yes, you have a male patient that is supine. It's roughly around 30 years old. I am now, as an EMT, I am now going into my AF pool. My patient is not alert on the AF pool scale because they are unconscious. So I'm going to try and get them to react to verbal stimuli. So, hey, buddy, can you hear me? Proctor says, patient is not responsive to verbal stimuli. I am going to now do a sternum rub on my patient. Hey, buddy, can you hear me? Is my patient responding to verbal or painful stimuli? Proctor is going to say no. So my patient is you on the AFPU scale. If my patient is you on the AFPU scale, I cannot do ANL times three. If my patient was alert or responded to verbal stimuli, I would go ahead and get my ANL times three or four, but I can't. Next, as the EMT, I'm going to ask what is my chief complaint and also do I see any life threats in my patient? Chief complaint is unknown. Patient fell off, the, off of uh, the roof or two stories and you see no life threats at the moment. Okay, I am now going in through, into my primary assessment and I am doing my ABCD. So airway, I am going to open up the airway or have my partner open up the airway using a jaw thrust. This way I keep the spine in line as much as possible and I don't agitate it. So I'm doing that, what do I see? Proctor saying that the mouth is clear. Okay, before I let this go, I'm gonna go ahead and have my partner put an OPA in there, uh, measure it out, make sure it's good to go. If the proctor asks you to explain, go ahead and explain. B, respirations. Is my patient breathing adequately enough to sustain life? I would go ahead and get the breaths per minute if required by my training facility or the school that I am attending. I am also going to auscultate for lung sounds. What do I got? Proctor, you have a patient that's breathing about 12 per minute and lung sounds are clear bilaterally. Okay, EMT now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my patient on a non-rebreather mask at 15 liters per minute. I have to give some sort of O2 because if I don't, I'm going to fail the NREMT. Side note here, you don't have to say that. I'm just saying this so you know. Always give some sort of O2. Got it? All right, cool. Uh, it's also a good idea to do your IPA. I'm gonna inspect, do I see any abnormalities? I'm gonna palpate in and down. Do I hear, do I feel or hear any crepitus? And I already auscultated. I am going to 
breathing, circulation. So next is circulation. I am going to check for a pulse. My patient's unconscious, so I'm going to do a carotid pulse. Is the pulse present? The pulse is present. Proctor would say that. The pulse is present. I'm also going to check CTC, color, temperature, and condition of the skin. What do I got? Uh, Proctor would say the skin is cool, it's uh, clammy and diaphoretic. Okay, also for my circulation, do I see any bleeding at all that I should attend to right now? Proctor's going to say no for this scenario. The D in transportation. So I'm going to determine my transport. Since my patient is unconscious, they fell two stories, I am going to load and go as soon as we put this patient on a backboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my vital signs. I use probels, pulse. I am getting a pulse, depending on how this showed you, it could be a radio or a carotid. Counting for 15 seconds. Let's say I got a pull, it's been 15 seconds or 30 seconds, depending on how they show you. If it's 15 seconds, I'm gonna get that number multiplied by four. If it's 30 seconds, I'm gonna get that number multiplied by two. And the proctor says, I have a pulse of 110. Respirations, I'm, gonna, I'm going to listen for respirations. What do I got? My respirations, the proctor says, are 14, labored and slightly shallow, but they're still adequate enough to sustain life. O for probels. O2 set, put an O2 set on my patient. What do I got? O2 set's about 92% on O2. Okay, blood pressure. I would get the stethoscope and the BP cuff, take off the shirt, obviously, pump it up, tell the proctor what I got, if it's an actual human being, but for the mannequin, I'm not gonna go and out of my trouble. But you should do these for your actual NRNT. Don't just say them, do everything. My blood pressure uh, turns out to be about 120 over 84. Okay, I'm going to check the eyes, see if they're pearl, what do I got? Pupils are, pupils are equal and reactive to light, but they're a little sluggish. Okay, not a big deal. L, level of consciousness. Is my patient still unresponsive? Yes, they are unresponsive. I'm going to check for lung sounds again. I would tell my patient to breathe if it was an actual patient and actually do it slow. What do I got? So you wanna verbalize all these things, like what you're thinking, it's better. Say it and do it. Also, before I move on, I'm gonna check skins again, CTC. What's the color, temperature, and condition of my patient's skin? Still cool, clammy, and diaphoretic. Okay, now I am in my sample history. If my patient was conscious, I would, ask, I would look for signs ask for symptoms, ask for any allergies, uh, any medications that might be taking, any pertinent medical history that I should know about. It could have been that they were having a heart attack or uh, something along those lines. Last oral intake, I would also get that. What was the last thing they ate or drank and how long ago was that? And then events leading up to what exactly were they doing right, right before they fell down, um, two stories. If there's nobody around to get that from, and if my patient can't communicate that to me, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. But now I am in my secondary assessment. I'm gonna do a full head to toe assessment using DCAP BTLS. DCAP BTLS stands for deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and swelling. Is it okay from this point on, I just say DCAP BTLS for each segment? The proctor would say yes, usually. So I'm checking for decap BTLS of the head. I'm going to palpate for any crepitus, looking for raccoon eyes, looking for battle wounds, checking the eyes for pearl. I'm also going to check for any fluid coming out of any orifices. What do I got? Proctor says it's unremarkable. I'm going down to the neck. I'm checking for JVD, jugular vein distension on my, on my patient, which would indicate a thoracic th pressure in the thoracic cavity. I'm looking for a step off behind the neck for any spinal injury. And I'm looking for tracheal deviation, which would indicate a possible tension pneumothorax, a late sign. What do I got? Unremarkable. I am going to, and I will check for decap BTLS of the neck. I'm checking for decap BTLS of the chest. I'm also going to do IPA. So I am going to palpate. Do I have any crepitus? I'm going to inspect. Do I see any abnormalities? And I'm going to auscultate again, just to be safe about everything. Proctor says unremarkable. I am going 
to do key, uh, check decapi TLS of the abdomen, checking all four quadrants in a rolling motion. And I'm checking for distension, rigidity, and tenderness. What do I got, Proctor? Proctor says, unremarkable. I'm going down to the pelvic region, checking for decapi TLS, making sure that it's stable and intact by rocking it back and forth slightly and trying to crack it open like a book slightly. What do I have? Proctor says, unremarkable. I, if it was a male, I'm gonna check for um, priapism. That would be an indication of a possible spinal injury. I am also going to check the perineum, which is the skin between the genitalia and the anus, checking for any contusions and decap TLS. What do I got? Proctor would say, unremarkable for this scenario. I'm only going through the sequence so you get it. Now, I'm going down to the lower extremities. I am checking for decap decap TLS an offset pressure above and below the knee, above and below the knee, checking for crepitus and decap TLS. What do I got? It's unremarkable. I am going to check CMS, which stands for circulation, motor, and sensory. My patient is un unconscious, so I can't check for motor or sensory, but I can check for circulation. I will get a pedal pulse, or you can also just do a, a uh, cap refill of the toes. What's my cap refill? We'll say it's about 30 sec three seconds, the proctor would say. Great, going up to the upper extremities, I'm checking for decap ETLS of the upper extremities, and I'm checking for offset pressure above and below the elbow. Do I have any crepitus, any decap ETLS? Unremarkable. Before I move on from the upper extremities, I'm going to check for CMS. I can't check for MRS, but I can check for circulation. Checking for a radio pulse, is it present? It's present, great. On head count, I am going to, we're going to move the patient to me to check the back. One, two, three. Checking for decap TLS and step off of the back, thoracic, and buttocks. What do I got? It's unremarkable, the proctor said. So I'm going, we're gonna go ahead and get this patient on a backboard. On three, one, two, three. Patient is now on a backboard. We are loading. We are on the way to the hospital if we haven't already left. I'm checking for any secondary injuries that I might have missed. I'm also going to recheck anything, anything that me or my partner already addressed. I'm going to reassess this patient every five minutes just to be super safe about it. And I am done with the skill. Remember, there are going to be other videos that will help you identify or correct certain trauma situations, like eviscerations, femur fractures, bleeding. So go ahead and stay tuned for those or watch out for them later on. Comments below. I'll see you guys later.